60 days before an election or 90 days before an election, one cannot, his name cannot be added onto the voters' register to, to cast a ballot in, during the elections. And we are talking of even December, not November. Not too long ago, the Supreme Court outlawed the use of the National Health Insurance Card as a form of identification for being able to register. The EC couldn't tell those who use the NHIS card to register. I have not heard anybody bring an application before the Supreme Court that the Electoral Commission 1 did not comply with the order and that the failure to comply with the order constitutes contempt. You know too well. So the story about the controversy of the 2012 voters register, which was the same register that was used for the 2016 election, does not actually begin with Abu Ramadan, but it begins in 2013 with the election petition. During the election petition, something strange but interesting happened. So here's the story, as captured in many of the affidavits of the applicants, but captured better and especially in a book written by the Daily Graphic the book is entitled The Pink Sheets, The Story of Ghana's Presidential Election Petition and is written by famous graphic court reporter Mabel Akubanase. The story is as follows that at the end of the 2012 presidential and parliamentary election vote count, President John Dramani Mahama, the winning candidate of the presidential election, garnered 5,574,000. 761 votes in total and the NDC parliamentary candidates both both those who won and those who lost garnered 5,127,641 votes the difference thereof is as follows 447,120 it meant that that number 447,120 voters actually voted for President John Dramani Mahama and did not vote for any NDC parliamentary candidate. We will then have to find who they voted for if they actually did vote both in presidential and parliamentary election. When the search was conducted by the court, it turned out that those 447,000 and over persons did not vote for any parliamentary candidate. They did not vote for MPP, CPP or any parliamentary candidate. The question was then put to Dr. Farijan by Mr. Philip Addison at the election petition hearing. Dr. Farijan opined that if persons voted in the presidential election and did not vote in the parliamentary election, they may well be Ghanaians who registered in Ghanaian missions abroad, that is, those who worked in our embassies abroad and those who were students abroad. Asked to provide the list of persons who registered as such, Dr. Farijan produced a list constituting only and only 2,000 and a little over 800 people, less than 3,000 Ghanaians for the 2012 election had voted, had registered to vote abroad. Well, it turned out that a huge question mark remained. So, 447,000 people on the register voted only for the presidential candidate. This was certainly curious. So, that is how the election petition story ended. Soon after the election petition, Dr. Farijan had fully completed his tenure as Ghana's second electoral commissioner and a new electoral commissioner was appointed, the first female ever to ascend to that position, the Honorable Charlotte Osei. Well, and truly serve the Republic of Ghana. In the office of chair of the electoral commission. In the office of chair of the electoral commission. And that I will uphold. And that I will uphold. Preserve. Preserve. Protect. Protect. And defend the constitution of the Republic of Ghana as by law established. And defend the constitution of the Republic of Ghana as by law established. So now so now enter Abu Ramadan number one. What was this case about? Abu Ramadan number one was a challenge mounted at the Supreme Court seeking a declaration that the National Health Insurance Card, having been used as a breeder document to identify people to get onto the voters register of 2012, was illegal. The case that was made before the court was that the National Health Insurance Card did not identify Ghanaians Therefore, it couldn't have been one of the documents that should have been used for the 2012 register. Article 42 provides that um, citizens who are 18 years of age and of sound mind are entitled to be registered and um, partake in um, voting 
in public, public elections and referendum. So that is why we went to court. When we looked at the CI 72, Regulation 1.3 had listed documents that people could use as proof of qualification. So there was passport, there was driver's license, there was national ID card, the NHIS card, and um, existing voters' ID. And if you don't have any of these, you could bring two guarantors, who have persons who have already registered, to guarantee for you to be put on the register. We realize that if you take each of the documents I've mentioned, on the face of it, you can tell um, the person's nationality. If you take a passport, if the person is Ghanaian, you would know. But with the NHIS card, there's no um, slot for nationality. And especially when it's not even given to just Ghanaians, it's given to all persons resident in Ghana. And the NHIS Act had defined um, resident to mean people who have um, lived in Ghana for a period of six months and, and above. So anybody in Ghana who is resident is entitled to be on the scheme and so bear the card. So um, given that on the face of the NHIS card, you cannot tell who a Ghanaian is from who is not, we thought it's not um, proper, it's not a proper form of establishing qualification to register. We are aware of the view that registration is not just about identity. You just don't take any document there which shows your face and your name to let people know you are who you say you are. It goes beyond that. We need to establish that indeed you are a Ghanaian, which the NHIS card didn't, didn't show. At the end of the hearing, the court directed the applicants and the respondents, being the Electoral Commission, to sit together and find a mechanism to resolve the issues around the voters' register of 2012. This is what transpired in those meetings. So pursuant to the directives of the court, we had some meetings with the EC. The second meeting we had with them was on 30th March. And present at the meeting was where our clients, Mr. Abu Ramadan and Ivan Zimako, Nana Santibedieto, myself, um, um, Mrs. Georgina Opokwa Mankwa, the former deputy chairperson. Mr. Amadou Sule was also there. And we had other officials from the EC too, um, some from the Attorney General as well. And EC's lawyer too was present at that meeting. And um, the issue, at that meeting, the issue of the NHIS cardholders came up. We wanted to find out whether they could um, identify persons who use the NHIS card to register. And um, Mrs. Upokwa Mankwa and Mr. Madusule told us it was difficult for them to make that determination. Their reason was that if you, on the source document, they didn't have an electronic database. First of all, they didn't have an, an electronic database of registrants. And when you go to the source document too, it's also difficult to tell who used what to register, especially when, uh, given that the slot for, to tell who used what card to register was just tailored for NID. So apart from the national identification card, no other card or no other identification was put there. So we even asked whether Although the, the slot was for NID, couldn't they even tell by the sequence of the figures because we know that passports have a certain um, number of sequence, same for NHIS and diverse license. But they, were, they insisted that you know, it was just tailored for NID, so apart from NID, they couldn't tell and that they had even taken a cue from um, the 2014 judgment and had now redesigned a new form for CI-91. So when you pick the CI-91, um, the Form 1A in CI-91, you can easily tell who you use what to register. But in, if, I, if I'm to quote Mrs. Opokwa Mankwa, as the register now stands, it is not possible to make such a determination. 
So we walked out of the meeting with a view that the the AC didn't have a database which could help them identify NHIS um, card registrants. Quite clearly, the parties were unable to resolve the issues. By this time, the eligibility of the National Health Insurance Card as a breeder document for the creation of the 2012 Voters Register had attracted the attention of high-profile politicians. Here, in an international media interview with the opposition leader, as he then was, Nana Akufuado, he spent time highlighting the issue. If you remember, not too long ago, the Supreme Court outlawed the use of the National Health Insurance Card as a form of identification for being able to register. There are allegedly, you know, some millions who have done that. So all of these people are on the register and you find that the register therefore is not really fit for purpose. We believe that it is in the interest of a credible process, a credible process that will allow all of us to be able to say yes, Peter Clotte, uh, the victor of the election, a Kufuado loser, we all accept it uh, because we will have a credible register. By this time, the tensions were high, and the Electoral Commission seemed adamant that they were unable to identify, isolate, and delete the names of persons who had registered with the National Health Insurance Card. Madame Shalosa said in an interview with Joy FM on News File Program on um, January 9th, 2016, friend that why the EC could not or was not going to delete the names of the NHIS holders from the role of um, the voters' role. She categorically stated that we are going to end up with a register that is very elitist and excludes the large majority of Ghanaians. Thus confirming that the majority of voters in fact used it to register. On 23rd July 2015, EC's Director of um, Public Affairs at the time, Mr. Chris Nosupari, in an interview with Joy FM the news editor Jifa Bampo, maintained that the names of persons who used the NHIS card to register were not going to be removed from the current voters' roll. Despite the Abu Ramadan judgment, he categorically stated that the Commission's position remains the same. It has not changed. The register is very, very credible and fit to be used for any elections in Ghana. From the level of disagreements from those engagements, it became inevitable that the court will have to come in again. Therefore, Abu Ramadan No. 2 occurred. In Abu Ramadan No. 2, the court had found that the parties were not able to resolve the matter, and therefore, directed upon the Electoral Commission to proceed to delete all the names in the voters' register of persons who had used the National Health Insurance Card. Even there, there was difficulty. And one afternoon at the Supreme Court in Accra, there was total drama. The court was very, very harsh on the Electoral Commission. So on 21st April 2016, um, there was hearing of the matter. And Justice Duche came up with a question. He asked EC's lawyer whether um, his client had a database that could um, tell persons who had um, registered since um, 2012. And if so, whether they could identify those who used the NHIS card to register. So the lawyer said he could not on his feet make um, that determination unless he consults his client. Luckily, Madame Chaltose herself was in court and Mr. Madusule, whom we had a meeting with, was also there. So um, the court permitted the lawyer to go and consult his client. This is just a simple yes or no question. So we would have thought that once he walks up to them, is either a nod or a wink to let them to let the lawyer know that's what we have but um, so he went to them and just as he was about coming to to the bar the CJ um, said um, he 
she wants um, she she wants them to go out so they can talk privately because there were some media persons sitting just behind them and it wasn't too ideal for a, converse, a lawyer client conversation. So they stepped out of court. We waited for more than ten minutes. They were not coming back. So the CJ sent um, some of the clerks to go and find them and bring them back to the courtroom for them to answer the question. The quote and unquote harshness of the court upon the electoral commission on that afternoon gave the matter of Abu Ramadan number two a second and different dimension. Three gentlemen who were hosting a radio program in Accra took turns to sort of abuse the court for their harshness against the electoral commission. They became known later on as the Moon Tier Three and were found for contempt against the Supreme Court. A jail term was imposed on them, and then more drama ensued. Members of the National Democratic Congress, the ruling party, urged President John Dramani Mahama to use his authority under the Constitution and his powers of pardon to pardon the three gentlemen and get them out of prison. There was disagreement among the NDC members at this time. However, on a fateful afternoon, President Mahama exercised his authority under the Constitution to pardon the three gentlemen. Later on in an interview, President Mahama explained why he did that. There's been a controversial matter in Ghana recently uh, involving your signature and the application of your authority. Three uh, gentlemen um, were on a radio program on Moon TFM and they said things that were unpalatable. They found themselves in trouble and they got um, a Supreme Court sentence to be in prison for four months. Um, their lawyers then started talking about the powers that has been given to you under the Constitution to get them out at some point uh, of, the, of the thing. Uh, Ghanaian society was broadly divided and many people spoke about what you should do and what you shouldn't do. There's also rumors that your personal lawyer also took a position on the matter, Mr. Tony Luther. And um, everyone was watching you. We thought there would be some pressure on you because you were being pulled both ways. Eventually, you decided to apply your authority under Article 72 to remit the rest of the sentence of these gentlemen. Um, society is still divided. Some think Mr. Mahama was wrong. Some think His Excellency was right. The authority is given to him. What underpinned your decision to, to do that? I think that the overriding consideration must be that all arms of government must act constitutionally. And I saw an oath on the 7th of January 2013 to abide by the Constitution. And so every action I take must be in consonance with the constitutional provisions. The young men were called before the Supreme Court and um, for contempt, for scandalizing the court. And even before they were called before the court, they had shown remorse, they had apologized for what they said. Before the court, they apologized again. Um, when they were sentenced in mitigation, they asked for mercy and apologized, retracted everything they said. And even after they were sentenced and left the court and went to prison, they still, you know, in written and verbal form, express absolute regret for what they did. I don't know what benefit it would have been to anybody if the three extra months they would have stayed in prison, I don't know. But certainly I abided rigorously by Article 72. I received a petition from the lawyers of the three and um, they stated all the grounds for which they thought that I should um, evoke my powers under Article 72 narrating every step of the way the regret they had shown and you know pleading for mercy and so i did exactly what the constitution said i should do i referred it to the council of state and the council of state came back to me and recommended that i exercise my powers under 72 not in terms of pardoning them they remain convicted and that's what a lot of people do not uh, realize they remain convicted they pay 30,000 Ghana cities in fines. That money is in the state coffers. But what I did was, instead of letting them spend four months in prison, they spent one month in prison. Indeed, if you look at the sentence, the conviction and the sentencing, 
The general consensus was that four months was quite a harsh a punishment to have imposed for that kind of crime. And so I believe that I acted constitutionally and um, it was in my interest. At the end of the day, the big question is this. Did the Electoral Commission really and truly comply with the court order? At some point, the Honorable Electoral Commissioner Charlotte Osse presented a list of over 56,000, less than 57,000 persons whom she had identified and isolated as those persons who used the National Health Insurance Card to register onto the 2012 voters register. The list was submitted to court and the Electoral Commission confirmed that these names had been deleted from the list. Was that satisfactory to the applicants? Were the names actually deleted? Was the 56,000 names of persons who had actually gotten onto the register by the NHIS card? NDC lawyer Eduji Tamaklo has a totally different view of the matter. Presided over by her ladyship, the Chief Justice George Wood. After the argument, they gave a date, and she herself wrote the judgment. She was very clear in her mind that the use of the NHIS card being the foundation or the breather document in the registration of those individuals was unconstitutional. So the court was clear. Unconstitutional because in the, in the superior wisdom of the court, Article 42 of the 1992 Constitution sets out three important criteria or qualification to become a registered voter in this country. One, citizenship. Two, 18 years and above and the last one, being of sound mind. Now, in the superior wisdom of the court, the NHIS card did not have the benefit of identifying whether the person is a Ghanaian or not, because the ultimate aim is to provide health, and health is open to all of us. And so when the court decided that having used the NHIS card as a breeder document. That whole thing is unconstitutional. The court was very clear because remember that they were seeking other reliefs. One had to do with the fact that the court should even declare the old voter card that was used as a breeder document. The court denied the plaintiff that particular relief. I mean, you know, the court did not grant them. And in fact, it was in that case that George Wood, CJ, as she then was, indicated clearly that the existing voter card becomes the best prima facie evidence in proof of that, you know, uh, 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 what shall I say, qualification or eligibility criteria. Now, fast forward, it was on the same basis that they came back in 2016. And if you read the, you know, the, the, the world reason judgment written by His Lordship Justice Sulek Badibli, which was concurred by Justice Bennett. If you read that judgment clearly, the court came to the conclusion again that if those individuals who registered with the NHIS card are still on the register, then to that extent, the register cannot be reasonably accurate. And so they use the word reasonably accurate. Now the court then, having looked at all the circumstances, ruled that one, or made these others, one, that because there are persons on the register who obviously got onto the voters' roll with the benefit of the NHIS card, they ought to be removed. And so they were, you know, the court made a direct order directed at the Electoral Commission to comply. And, and, and Paul, that order of the Supreme Court, and in fact, Justice Sulek Badegbe, in analyzing the point, made the point that, listen, failure to comply with the Supreme Court order is a high crime. It's a high crime. And so, where they make an order and you fail to comply, you have more or less, you know, you are in contempt of the Supreme Court of Ghana. And remember, even for a president, that constitutes ground for your removal from office, failing to comply with an order emanating from the Supreme Court. How much more the Electoral Commission? I recall vividly, when Abu Ramadan number two was argued, I was in court. My senior Tadio Sorry, I recall when the matter came before the Supreme Court judges. After all was said and done, 
The electoral commission came before their lordships with about 54,000 names, if I recall vividly, that they have used their own internal processes to uncover those names and indicated to the court the compliance. Oh, since then, I have not heard anybody bring an application before the Supreme Court that the electoral commission one did not comply with the order and that the failure to comply with the order constitute contempt you know too well and the supreme court on the basis of that non-compliance or willful disobedience of their order proceeding to either say the commissioners of the electoral commission are in contempt of the supreme court nothing whatsoever had happened my name tamaklo if you go to Aneho in Togo, the whole family with that name Tamako. So if you go to Togo and you see someone with the name Tamako, that in and of itself should not mean that the person is a Togolese. And that is how close, closely knitted we are as a people. So I have a fundamental problem. And, and if we are not careful, Paul, we may get to a point where our voters register will become the classic example of a xenophobic register. A register that is made on the basis of exclusion. On the basis of exclusion. And that is very dangerous for our forward march. Can you imagine? If we all begin to ask everyone, or every one of us, are you a Ghanaian? We will be creating a chaotic situation. Remember that Ivory Coast went into that scenario with Alassane Ouattara. Alassane Ouattara, who even at a point was a prime minister, was subsequently declared to be an, uh, a Bokinabe. And the result of that declaration of Alassane Ouattara as a Bokinabe created the problem that your good friend, Babu, went through. And so we need to be very, very careful on this issue of citizenship. So, what is the combined effect of the court ruling in Abu Ramadan number one and Abu Ramadan number two? Three reliefs were granted and they are all as follows. Relief number one. Relief one granted a declaration that upon a true and proper interpretation of Article 42 of the 1992 Constitution, the use of the National Health Insurance Card to register a voter Pursuant to Regulation 13D of the Public Elections Registration of Voters, Regulation 2012 CI 72, is inconsistent with Article 42 of the 1992 Constitution and is to the extent of the inconsistency void. Accordingly, as the Court says, by virtue of the power conferred on this Court by Article 2, Clause 2 of the 1992 Constitution, the said Regulation 13D of CI 72 is struck down. Here is the second part. According to the court, relief 2 is denied to the extent that upon a true and proper interpretation of Article 42 of the 1992 Constitution, the use of the existing voter identification card and the Regulation 13E of CI 72 is referable to voter identification card acquired before the coming into force of CI 72 means voter ID card acquired before 2012's election. The final relief is as follows. An order of perpetual injunction restraining the Electoral Commission from using the National Health Insurance Card in its present form and a voter identification card other than as explained in relief 2 for the purpose of registering a voter under Article 42 of the 1992 Constitution. Now, this is very interesting. The court seems to be saying that the use of uh, the 2012 registration card has been injuncted, and the understanding of the of a voter's ID card should be, as they say in Relief 2, which is to say it is those voters' ID card that was issued before CI 72, which is those voters' ID card that was used in the 2008 election. That's very, very interesting, but this is the combined effect of Abu Ramadan number one, Abu Ramadan number two, and Abu Ramadan, the court's clarification. From the foregoing, is there a legal basis to exclude the voter ID card of 2012 and 2016 from being a relevant card to identify Ghanaians 
for the purpose of compiling a new voters register, if there should be a new voters register. If you go and take the 2012 voters register, which is the register we are currently using, and which had on it over 40 million people, those who use the, N the NID card, which is the national identification card, are the only people you can tell um, the documentation they use to prove qualification. Because apart from them, no other card was, was registered because there was no field for them. Therefore, it is impossible to pull out the names of persons who use the NHIS card to register. Because apart from the, from the Form 1A, there's also the Form 1C, which is the electronic um, version of the Form 1A. And they train their um, registration officials, their data clerks, to just key in the information provided them on the Form 1A. So if there was no slot for writing the National um, Health Insurance Card, definitely there was no provision made for it on the Form 1C. So whether electronically or by way of the SOL document, the EC cannot or could not and still cannot tell those who use the card, the NHIS card, to register. Thereby making it so impossible for them to comply with the order that the court made. And thereby also making the current register still not reasonably accurate and credible. It appears to me that given that the EC was unable to comply with the court orders, they are trying to do the right thing by giving us a reasonably accurate and credible register. And the only way to do that is to create a fresh register. And they have isolated the voters, the existing voters ID card because they couldn't take out the NHIS registrants. And we cannot tell those who registered with the NHIS card so it wouldn't even be right for the same people who use, who might have used the NHIS card to register and obtained um, the, an existing voter's ID card to now walk to the police station with the same ID card to register on a fresh register. We will still be bringing back the same unqualified persons. And this would not help us because we need to move on as a country. We need to ensure that we, we get something which is credible, something which is in line with Article, Article 42 which, mean, which uh, makes provision that only citizens should, should register. NHIS card was given to both citizens and non-citizens. So the likelihood that we have non-citizens on the register is, is serious. And quite apart from whether, whether you're even a non-citizen and you didn't prove qualification to register, you registered illegally. And the court has made that so clear in all, Abu, in all three Abu Ramadan judgments. That just walking to the police station to say you're a Ghanaian is not enough. You need to prove that you are indeed a Ghanaian and you, you qualify to be put there. So from Abu Ramadan number one, number two, and number three, the Supreme Court is now hearing another matter. This time, it is the National Democratic Congress versus the Attorney General and the Electoral Commission. The Attorney General will be arguing on Thursday before the court that the Electoral Commission has a certain sound independence under the Constitution. Abu Ramadan number one essentially declared the use of the NHIS card as unconstitutional. It was unconstitutional because it did not satisfy the essential requirements stipulated in Article 42 for a person to be a Ghanaian, mm -hmm. in the sense that you had no means of verifying the identity of or the Ghanaianess mm -hmm. of a person. Through that national insurance card. card. So that's one. But the court also made certain pronouncements, which, which for me are very crucial. Now, Chief Justice Wood, who gave the judgment to the court in Abu Rwanda number one, indicated, <laughs> we, 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 we know ambiguity at all, that the Electoral Commission had the necessary um, discretion to undertake their functions in accordance with the provisions of the Constitution. And the court also refrained from specifying the kind of instruments that can be used as, as, as tools for voter identification in a registration exercise. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying that the court, apart in Abu Ramadan, apart from declaring as unconstitutional the use of, of the NHIS card, did not specify the kind the of, kinds of cards that should be cards, used, whether birth certificate, whether passport, all, should be used at all. Don't you now, I'm coming, that number one. Now the reason why that was not done by 
or that was not done in Abu Rwanda number one. It was actually made clearer in Abu Rwanda number two. Mm -hmm. Abu Rwanda number two, the decision, the lead judgment was written by Justice Badibi, Judge Badibi JSC, who is still a member of the court. Mm -hmm. Badibi JSC clearly indicated that insofar as the functions of the Electoral Commission under Article 45, paragraph A is concerned, which is to compile and revise the voter ID card as periods of time is concerned. It is not subject to any fetter or control whatsoever. So essentially, that's probably be actually said in clear terms, expanded on it, whatever. I think as, as at pages 36 to 39 of the Supreme Court Organ of Volume 1, Supreme 2015 2016 Report, that when it comes to the Financial the Electoral Commission to compile and revise, revise voter registration, it's not subject to any, 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 any provision of the Constitution at all. It is unlike other provisions of the Constitution affecting the Electoral Commission, which are subject to the Constitution itself, and the provisions of the Constitution like itself. Like expanding constituencies and, and things like that. Precisely. Mm -hmm. so, so reference is made to even Article 49, the voting, manner of voting, mm -hmm. Article 50, mm -hmm. and whatever. Now, if you look at Article 45A, of course, uh, clearly, quite interesting, that such a fashion is not subject to the control or this, the said external direction or control. But does the, does the, does the, so, so does the Constitution, I mean, you're, you're a philosophical yeah. lawyer, does the Constitution contemplate of an unfettered power? Well, good. So the point I'm making it cl clearly, I'm, I'm very fair-minded in my analysis and whatever, mm -hmm. is that even though Justice Badibi clearly um, spelt out this discretionary power for the Electoral Commission to compare with this razor, it's subject to, as far to only two or three requirements. The first is to enact regulations. That is in Article 51. But the 51 specifies that all financial electoral commissions are by regulations. Once that is done, the second regulation, se second um, mm -hmm. um, um, factor that the electoral commission should be guided by is whether indeed Article 42 will be met, and that is to guarantee the right of all Ghanaians to vote. Yes. And Justice Wood actually stated, Abu Rwanda number one, that there's a need to safeguard the electoral processes from voter fraud, underage voters, mm -hmm. and non-Ghanaians. So Article 42 itself must be construed in a manner that will secure the right of all Ghanaians, and Ghanaians only, to vote. Mm -hmm. And therefore, as far as I'm concerned, where the Electoral Commission is seeking to use any instrument or means of carrying out a voter registration exercise, the main factor that ought to be examined is whether the process by which it seeks to do so is one that is in accord with the requirement to ensure that it's only Ghanaians and Ghanaians only who, 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 who proceed to register. But the voter registration exercise is as important as the right to vote. The third argument I'm going to make is that indeed the existing voter register has been exposed as far as even 2013 to be inherently flawed.